I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to take a look at pi arrow tables. Now, many of you have asked about pi arrow tables since I've demonstrated pandas tables from Snowflake in the past, mainly because pi arrow tables are known to be <clears throat> very high performing and they have lots of really cool features and they're sort of considered to be the future of like data tables in general. So as far as I know, Snowflake does not support uh, bringing data into Snowflake using pi arrow tables, uh, but you certainly can use native functions in order to get data out of Snowflake into pi arrow, which you can use for your projects. Let's get to it. Need easy time collection and project management across your business? Make sure to check out my time collection solution. The link is in the description. Okay guys, so pi arrow tables coming out of Snowflake is actually a pretty new thing. This wasn't available when I started doing this series and uh, I looked back recently and I could see that it was there. When I first started, we were only getting the pandas tables out of Snowflake uh, using the connector. And so now we have an additional way of doing it. It's been there for a little while, but not as long as I've been doing these videos. Um, and so it's a cool one to check out today. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, import our Snowflake connector uh, that we installed in a previous episode. Make sure to check out that video uh, if you get a chance. And then we can uh, give a little feedback here. We're gonna say we're connecting and then Let's set up a brief try accept finally uh, block here so that we can go ahead and, and uh, get our connection opened, uh, which I'm going to just paste in for brevity here. Um, so that is my connection. Uh, yours might look different um, depending on what you're working on and how you wanna connect. And so I'll just print connect it after that. And then we'll go ahead and start our uh, accept, exception block here just to make sure we've got something to catch an error if we get one and then we'll you know uh, close our connection if we need to um, and that's gonna uh, definitely make things go a bit more smoothly here and so there we go we can go exception accept exception as E and if we get one we'll just print it off and then uh, we can uh, do a finally block here and and I'll just do a very quick one here, you know, print disconnecting, just so that we have a little bit of feedback uh, from our finally block here. And then I'll just go ahead and close that connection. Uh, you can also use an if in there, you know, if connection, then connection.close. You can try that as well. I've used that in other videos. Uh, today, we're just gonna close it in our final block, finally block, and then we'll print done at the end. And once we're done with that, we can go ahead and we'll hit F5 on the keyboard and that'll start our script and we'll just test it to make sure we can connect and disconnect and we are good to go. So getting pi arrow tables uh, from Snowflake is very similar to getting our pandas tables from Snowflake uh, with, with some few slight differences. Uh, we are gonna need a cursor, so we'll do cs equals cnn.cursor here. That's gonna give us the cursor object to work with. And then we can just you know, build our SQL string or you can just punch it in directly into the next statement here, but I'll use uh, SQL variable and we'll load that with a statement there, select star from project. And then we can use our cs.execute. That's gonna execute that SQL statement and it's gonna give us lots of options at that point as to what we can do with the data. Now we could just you know, print off the data by looping through it or we could create a pandas data table, uh, data frame. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an arrow table. And so we'll say AT underscore project, our variable there will be equal to cursor.fetch arrow all. And that's gonna get uh, all of the records from that statement and it's going to load it into the arrow table and that is going to be an object that we can use uh, just like you use uh, in your other projects with your arrow tables and it's very very handy you'll notice that we don't actually need to have the uh, import arrow um, 
uh, statement at the top of this script, uh, but we will add it later because we're going to use uh, an arrow method just to demonstrate uh, how to use that. But the object that's passed back to the at underscore uh, project variable there, and in this case it will be at underscore product, um, as we're loading another one, and we'll load a third one just for demonstration um, so that we have uh, three arrow tables that we can investigate and look at. And then we can sort of compare with a pandas data frame uh, as well as, uh, you know, maybe using some methods there uh, to demonstrate both arrow and panda. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, so what we're going to do here, again, we're just going to execute some SQL select star from staff. I've got three little tables in my uh, Snowflake database there and we'll load that last arrow table underscore ta staff with uh, cs dot fetch arrow all and that's gonna get our data for us so that we can we can take a look. Next we can give a little bit of feedback we can say display results here and uh, and then we can uh, give the name of our table that we want to display here. So we'll say uh, projects and then now we can sort of show some of the data from our pi arrow table and we can do that by just printing off what we got. Now if your arrow table has a ton of records I don't recommend using the print statement for the entire thing. In this case uh, I only have a few records in there. But there we go we've got our at underscore project print it off there and then we'll print off the at underscore product uh, just for comparison and then lastly we can print off the staff arrow table which is the uh, listing of staff that I created in my uh, small little database here on Snowflake and so there we go we can print off all of those just to take a look at how those ones appear and uh, you'll definitely notice that they are quite different from uh, how they appear when you print off, you know, the head or tail of your pandas uh, data frames. And there you go. So we're going to use that fetch arrow all. We're going to load each of these variables here. And uh, as the script progresses, once it's got the data in the data tables, uh, it's going to print off whatever it finds. We'll hit F5 there and we'll go uh, see what happens over in idle here. So there we go. So we've got uh, some output and as you can see uh, it doesn't look anything like what you might see coming out of a printing your pandas or even looping through a, res a result set. You'll notice that um, the uh, pyro table is definitely you can see it's in because it is all arrays uh, you can definitely see that the uh, the output is very array like and uh, you're definitely not going to be using this for readability, although it is very, very fast for doing uh, table-based operations or array-based operations. And for those of you familiar with Arrow, you'll be able to use all of the Arrow methods and things that you would like to use on your Arrow tables, including converting those to pandas or whatever else you would like to use for data tables or for calculations or data cleaning or whatever. So there you go. This is the staff table. Uh, we walk through each of those. The uh, uh, product table above it and the project table above that. Um, th those came out exactly as we wanted to see them uh, in the arrow data tables. But we could say, you know, use a different method. And this is what's new is that until now we've been using our fetch pandas all uh, and that is great for getting a data frame. So I can change the name of our variable there to data frame underscore project or df underscore project. And I will print that instead of the arrow table. And we've received a pandas table now. And I can hit F5. And you can see what the difference looks like in the sort of output when we output it to the console. So at the very top there, you can see that looks a lot more like a table than you know the output from the arrow table. However, the pandas, uh, in general, the pandas performance is not as good as pyro tables, and so um, that is why a lot of people like to use the pyro tables. Um, there's differences in in size and and speed capabilities there. 
And so that is the difference with pandas. Uh, if we wanted to use fetch pandas all uh, instead of the fetch arrow all, and I can swap that back to our arrow table uh, using the fetch arrow all, and we'll change that variable name down there and get the result that we had before, and that is what we want to see there. So there we go, we've got our three tables coming out in pi arrow, which is what we had in the original example. And so there we go, there's our projects with the pi arrow dot table as the type. And so now we have some pi arrow tables. So the logical next step would be that we could do something like import uh, our pi arrow uh, and we'll import that as PA and that's going to allow us to have all of the different methods and, and things from that library as well now that we have an actual arrow table as a loaded variable there so we can you know we can say df or data frame is equal to pa dot table uh, dot two pandas and and that'll use the arrow library to give us a, a converted table back, a pandas table back, uh, which is really great if you want to switch between them after you've got them in memory. So uh, there's a ton of different methods that you can use in, in the uh, in the PyArrow library. So these are just going to give you even more flexibility in how you can write your solution. And I can even use the, you know, df.head uh, 10 records there, even though there's not 10 records in there, I don't think. But that's a pandas method, and you can see uh, here's the output after I hit F5. There's our table uh, of projects, and that is exactly what we want to see there. And so there's a lot of flexibility. I do like this uh, this pi arrow implementation. Of course, you could import pandas as PD and do a whole bunch of pandas stuff if you wanted to, uh, but we didn't need to do that here. Pi arrow is really great. It's got a lot of size and speed advantages. Uh, over using pandas for your big data data sets. Interested in more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description.